Hello everyone. Welcome to ninth episode of Microsoft 365 Security Administrator video series. In previous videos, we looked at different aspects of Microsoft 365 security. Also, we looked at user roles and administrator roles. And I demonstrated how to configure different type of user roles and different types of administrator roles. So if you remember, I highlighted the importance of least permission policy. According to least permission policy, we should be having minimum number of global administrators. The global administrator is the person or the role that has most permissions or privileges in our Microsoft 365 tenant. And other than that, there are a number of different administrative roles than global administrator there are number of additional administrator roles built into microsoft 365 tenant to provide least permission policy based security and access and also we discuss under this module security and access and how to configure device and access and permissions today we'll be looking at solutions for external access if you look at a scenario where you would want to provide access to the services and resources within your tenant, but the user is in somewhere else. Let's say this example. So you have a consultant who is working with you, but he doesn't have an account in your tenant. And according to tight security policy that you have in your organization, you wouldn't be able to create an account for this particular person. On the other hand, this person would need to access your tenant in order to do his work. So how to uh, configure or how to provide solution for this? In Microsoft 365 and Azure, there are few ways that you can tackle this issue. In Azure, we have, there are two types of external access. One is known as B2C, other one is B2B access. B2C is business to consumer model where you would allow user to use different identity for an example social media identity to, to access uh, resources and b2b is business to business model where you would allow anyone who has microsoft account it can be free account or it can be their own tenant account to be able to access your tenant to provide resources and the next one is you can use non-Microsoft account to invite them. For example, you can create a user in your tenant using non-Microsoft account. Uh, you're sending an invitation using non-Microsoft account. Once you send an invitation out, the recipient using non-Microsoft account can receive the invitation and he can use any type of Microsoft account to create this connection. So it can be either free microsoft account something like uh, msn.com live.com or outlook.com or he can use its own uh, tenant or different tenant in my previous example i was talking about a consultant where a consultant is working for uh, isp or service provider and the user is somewhere else and user will not be able to create an account for the consultant and consultant has his own Microsoft tenant, whereas a uh, client has his own uh, tenant. So then client can send an invitation to consultant and consultant can accept an uh, invitation and using his tenant, his own Microsoft tenant account, he will be able to access client's account and then access resources and provide his services. So that is the scenario that we are looking at. So let's see where we can configure this configuration. This is my Microsoft tenant. So if you go into users, if you go into active users, you will see the list of users that I have created within my tenant. And if you go into guest users, users. So this is where we would keep our guest users in order to create B2B connection or business to business configuration. But if you notice, there is no way that we can create guest user within Microsoft 365 admin center. To do that, you need to go to Microsoft Azure Active Directory. If I click on that, I will be uh, sent this here, uh, Azure Active Directory Admin Center. Then you can uh, go to Users under Azure Active Directory. There you would find an option to create a new guest user. 
So then what you can do is you can click on this and then you would see there are two options. When you're creating a guest user, you can create a guest user with your own domain name or you can use some other domain name. So according to your requirement, you can use it. For example, my previous example, a consultant can use his ID or consulting company's uh, login ID uh, to access your tenant. Let's say you have another situation where you have number of mailboxes sits in on-premises and another set of mailboxes you are moving to the cloud. So then set of users are logging in from uh, on-premises and others are, in, others are on the cloud. So then you can create a users in different scenarios uh, using your domain name but having a guest account. Let's create a guest user here. So how to do that is I'm going to select invite user. Let's say name in bond. Email address is this one. The first name is J bond. And also you can configure the personal message. Let's say we would like to invite you to access our tenant please accept so this is the uh, invitation personal message and then i can configure other stuff let's say the location and all that and then i can send an invitation so you would see here i have used a gmail account to send this email so let's go into the gmail and let's see what we can you know what we received uh, to this gmail account Hopefully, within next few minutes, few seconds, we would be receiving this one. Yeah, so you would see here, this is the invitation that I've received. So you would see here, we would like to invite you to our uh, tenant, please accept. Then what I'm going to do is, I need to click on this. Then you would see here, I click on the link and then I have redirected here. So there, you would see, now I don't have any. A password what you can do is you can email a code to the same email address if you look at here you would see uh, use a code here so let's copy this code and then enter here right so I can now I can sign in to Microsoft account using an invitation I need to accept it I want to add the user you would see as a guest user, now you can use this guest user to provide specific permission. For example, member of a group or even owner of an existing group. So in that way, we can provide access to external user uh, based on a guest user's uh, or external user access principle. I hope you understand what is B2B or business to business scenario instance user or the user not being created within your tenant uh, to be able to access your uh, resources or shared folders. Using this B2B or business to business mechanism, we can provide access to non-AD users or non-Azure AD users of your organization or the tenant. Uh, you can provide access uh, to uh, documents, resources, applications, and their, uh, you know, the main, you can access various kind of resources, uh, managing our own control of our data which means we are not creating users but we are providing access in a more controlled way and if you look, look at uh, OneDrive and SharePoint online that also use Active Directory B2B APIs uh, when it comes to uh, providing access and maintaining permissions and then when it comes to license all free capabilities or free free uh, resources that are available in Microsoft 365 or services will be free for guest users but if they are using any uh, paid services within microsoft 365 either you need to have your own license to be able to assign to guest users or guest users should have their own licensing uh, to access your data uh, there are four major type of types of external instances where we can provide access based on b2b where one state is homed in external instance of azure and represented as a guest into inviting organization. So uh, in this case, uh, the, the example that I was giving you earlier, uh, so you are providing access to your tenant 
but user is in a different tenant and they are using their own licenses and then the next second one is home with microsoft account which is free account and you're providing access in this case we need to have our own licensing if they are accessing paid services of microsoft 365 and then the other one is homed in other organization on premises active directory and then synced with host organizations ad so it's a synchronized identity scenario so i have done one video about synchronized identities and the fourth one is homed in host organizations azure ad with users type guest and credentials that host organization managers so host organization manage the uh, credentials but we are providing access to our tenant during this video we were talking about solutions for external access mainly we focused on business to business or b2b access scenario i was explaining i was taking you through azure b2b and also microsoft 365 to provide access to external users uh, using their own credentials but providing access in our tenant or services in our tenant so i hope you understand the external solutions and then uh, I hope this video is informative and thanks for viewing. Hope to see you in next video.